Welcome folks, Mac T Garage, and I have another oil sample test, these virgin samples, and the primary one we're concentrating on is the Liquid Molly Special Tech Synthetic 5W20, and I will be comparing it to the uh, Walmart Super Tech 520. We're really going to concentrate more so on the Liquid Molly because you can go down below or up here uh, to the cards and uh, see the actual review of the Wally World uh, Syntec 520 but I had to have something to compare it to so we're gonna go ahead and compare this uh, look liquid molly to the uh, Wally World Syntec and see where it stands in the whole gist of things in our oil testing for virgin samples before use so let's go ahead and start the whole process and right off the bat we have initially what I've done is pulled out the SDS to see who makes this stuff and it is made in Germany and you can see here on the uh, section one of the SDS where who the supplier is in Germany contact information and everything else that you may need to get a hold of them concerning this product next thing we have is part of it is the SDS section and I wanted to take and go over this real quick I decided to add this to my oil sample testing to give people as much information as possible so in the SDS section of this uh, wonderful uh, I guess uh, oil that we have here the liquid molly uh, I have discovered that it is a hydro treated heavy paraffinic, paraffinic and it is a solvent de wax okay now this is really getting complicated here but I'm gonna tell you right now we probably have a group one with a group two mixture which barely qualifies this oil as a synthetic yes folks it barely qualifies so uh, what they've done is they've mixed it they've taken a taken a basically a base oil that's been uh, distilled a little bit it's a heavy mineral oil and then they've added some hydro treated oil uh, mineral oil to it to bring it up to just barely in the synthetic category so this oil is not much better in my opinion than a conventional oil and that will play a lot in what we're going to be looking at here and then of course we also have the uh, you know section 9 of the information about a tad bit of uh, uh, information that wasn't quite going in there uh, in there they had 220 degrees Celsius for their uh, initial boiling point or flash point they have there and that comes out to 428 degrees Fahrenheit now the lab test I did came out to 445 degrees Fahrenheit so there's a little difference here uh, between the SDS and the actual lab testing that you're gonna see here also in the viscosity testing they had it at an 8.2 the lab test had it at 8.48 which means it's a little bit on the heavier side according to the laboratory testing we got back the technical data that was included in here uh, says that their uh, total base number TBN is a 9.1 and our lab test came in at a 6.6 .6 that's a pretty healthy uh, difference between the TBN on this oil because the TBN is important and I'll explain why here in a second but going on forward we had the liquid molly and we did the test on it on November 28th of 2018 and went through it and we also uh, went and checked to make sure that we knew what the price was and the price that I bought it on Amazon was $29.99 with free shipping for a 5 liter container now keep in mind 5 liters is different than 5 quarts so you'll have to do the math but I ended up buying two 5 liter containers in order to have enough to do an oil change and utilize this oil to get some used oil results also note that in the uh, text response from the oil company or oil lab that I tested at Blackstone uh, they're pretty much saying I've done this before and I have I've done a lot of oil testing and they're just acknowledging that fact but basically they're saying that the the oil the molly 
uh, liquid molly is going to be a good serviceable oil and it has a TBN of 6.6 .6, and it will perform according to its intended purpose in lubricating my engine when it's running. So no harm, no foul there. Now the uh, total, total base number TBN uh, is basically a measure of the alkaline concentration present in the lubricant. These alkaline additives are basically used in your engine oils to prevent buildup of acids and, and uh, stuff in the lubricant as it breaks down. Because as it breaks down, it forms acids. We got alkali and acids. We want to keep these acids from getting too much because uh, basically what happens, acids will then cause it to eat at things and we don't want our bearings to be ate up and everything else internal to cause problems, seals, all this stuff does not like an acid base, so we want to keep that from happening. But overall, between 5 and 10 mg, uh, or 5 and 10 TBN, as we're going to get, uh, is what you're looking for. And this liquid molly comes in at a, you know, 6.6. .6. Uh, from my experience, pretty much a run-of-the-mill thing. So uh, we're going to see what it's actually going to be at the end of the testing when I do actually utilize this in my edge and run it and then we can see how far that TBN drops because I've had a oil or two drop dramatically for the TBN and that did not work out. Uh, real quick we got then the uh, uh, what is it the Wally World Syntec 520 it came out pretty good pricing everything else on it uh, their statement on it the uh, Super Tech was $15.98 for a five quart uh, container of it so you need two of them in order to get six quarts for me. So, you know, you're going to spend 30, 32 bucks or so for uh, some oil plus tax. But uh, it basically had some titanium in it and uh, other detergents dispersants. So if you want to see more on this one, go ahead and watch the video on the Super Tech. Now, going in conventionally and, and talking about this, we're going to start out with the aluminum. And with most things, you're going to have some aluminum transferred to the oil during the processing. Can't get away from it. It has to run through pipes and everything else. So we do start out with a uh, liquid molly with a one part per million on the aluminum where the SuperTech had two when it started. Universal averages are generally about, uh, what is it, one. So chromium, we had no chromium, which is good. Universal averages are zero. Iron, we had one part per million of chromium in the liquid molly and two parts per million in the super tech with a universal average of one the copper we had zero parts per million and the universal average there is going to be one our lead was zero and across the board it was universally zero also which is good tin we z had a zero for both going across the board and the universal averages are zero in these two now we got the molybdenum. Yes, molybdenum. Lo and behold, liquid molly has zero. Yes, zero molybdenum. Now how do we get the name? We'll discuss this at the end. But anyway, if you want some molybdenum, go to the SuperTech. They got 58 parts per million. Universal averages are about 69. Nickel. We have nickel in... Uh, nothing here. Zero across the board for both and the manganese is uh, going to be zero across the board for both of the oils and the universal averages. We have silver at zero parts per million universally and within the oils themselves. We have zero titanium in the liquid molly but we do have 30 parts per million in the super tech. Okay, give one for the super tech here. They got a little titanium anti-wear additive. Universally, it's about three. And if you didn't know, titanium seems to be an up-and-comer as far as an anti-wear additive. Then we also have our, uh, what is it, potassium. Yes, I'm sort of blocked here, but potassium is running in there pretty good. And uh, as far as it goes, we have two in the potassium, and the super tech has three with the universal average being one. Boron, going on to boron. We have 71 parts per million boron in our uh, molly, liquid molly, and uh, 190 parts per million in our super tech, with 92 being the universal average. 
Silicon. We don't want much silicon in our oils or anything like that, but it is an anti-foaming agent. So the liquid molly has two parts per million, with the SuperTech having seven, and universally it is generally just about four. Sodium. Sodium, we, you know, some oils use a lot of sodium, but in this case, the liquid molly only uses two parts per million sodium, along with the SuperTech using two parts per million. But as you can see, universally, 57 parts per million is in oil. So that is something that, you know, you want to pay attention to because sodium can be contributed to coolant leaks. So you have to know this ahead of time when you're doing the testing. Otherwise, you may come up with something like, hey, you might have a water leak. Anyway, we got the calcium. Calcium on the mo liquid molly is 1,866 parts per million. And that is a good detergent to have in there, whereas the SuperTech at a mere 972 parts per million, with the universal average being 1,862. So we're going to give the Liquid Molly the uh, detergent additive award for this one, because it is coming in pretty good. Magnesium. We have five parts per million magnesium in Liquid Molly. They really skimped on that. Uh, quite a bit, but the Super Tech comes in at 722 with the uh, magnesium, and the universal average is just 106 for most oils across the board. Phosphorus is another leading additive that you will always find in an oil, and the Liquid Molly has 694 parts per million of it in their oil, and the Super Tech only has 663 parts per million with 665 being the average. Now they do try to limit some of this phosphorus for catalytic converter issues along with the zinc. Zinc is 759 in the liquid molly and the SuperTech only has 713 in it. Again they try to limit that below 800 parts per million with the universal averages being 774 parts per million for most oils and barium of course is zero across the board and even universally. Now moving along we have the SUS viscosity of 210 degrees Fahrenheit and the liquid molly comes in at a 54.0 with the super tech coming in at 53.7 and that is definitely within the scale of the 47 to 57 that uh, you're looking for when you're doing your testing. Your CST viscosity at 100 degrees Celsius I will note this later, so pay attention. 8.48 on the scale compared for the liquid molly, and then the 8.38 for the super tech, with the scale be between 6.4 and 9.7 is what you're really looking for. Flashpoint, another bone of contention for the liquid molly, because I got some very uh, different numbers when I look at their their paperwork for the SDS and their sales literature. So uh, I don't know what to think, and then the lab test comes up with another number. So I really got three, but we're going to go with the lab. And they came in at 445 degrees for your flashpoint, and then the super tech came in at 435. Now as far as the fuel, antifreeze, and water, we wouldn't expect any of that in a virgin sample, and thankfully there is none. So we're going to move right along over to the insolubles, and there are no insolubles present in this oil. So... Uh, that being said, I think we're good to go on that. Now, something I did not do with the SuperTech that I did do with the Molly, uh, Liquid Molly, is I did a TBN, total base number, and I got a 6.6 .6 from the lab on it, which, again, is a bone of contention for the paperwork that the Liquid Molly is putting out. So, but nothing for the uh, SuperTech. I did not do that testing back then, and I am doing it now for all other oils, so look forward to that as we go. Other things that I really do want to cover with you all is uh, the liquid molly. Now, what is in the name is not in the oil. Liquid molly has no molly. Thus, the nature of the name has no connection with the anti-wear additive molybdenum. Okay? Now, is this a marketing ploy or a play on words? You are going to have to make that decision. But I will say that Liquid Molly is the prime example of a barely in name marketed synthetic that in my opinion is nothing more than a group 1 oil mixed with an unknown amount of group 2 oil and this oil at best is a three to 5,000 mile oil. That's it folks. That is a, as good as it gets on there. 
uh, as far as the liquid molly goes. And you can be the, the, the tester on it. You can decide what you want to decide. I gave this uh, basically like a C- minus or something overall grade on it. It barely beat out the Super Tech. It is like number five of the bottom of the barrel oils. So it, it didn't even make the midpoint. Uh, it's down at the very bottom. So, you know, if you think that this is a good oil, then use it. I, you know, I'm not your decision maker for you as far as price or anything else. But I do find it highly unusual that a company would go by the name of Liquid Molly and absolutely have no Molly in it. And that is definitely a marketing deception in my part. So I really give this a, a lower grade in that and just marketing. If I had to give them a marketing grade, I'd give them an F because I think they're playing on the consumer. And this oil does have absolutely no Molly in it. Nothing. Which uh, I think people are thinking it has it in it. And this proves that wrong. So uh, make your choice. Be a wise consumer and make sure that you watch these videos to understand what's in your oil and why you pick what you do. And uh, be an informed consumer because not everything is as it seems. This is Mac T and Mac T Garage, and this is an oil based series. I'm moving over from Mac T Ford Edge to the Mac T Garage for future oil references. So I uh, look forward to seeing more videos over in Mac T Garage concerning oil testing and usage. And I also want you all to like and subscribe to Mac T Garage YouTube channel. That way I can get more members in there and start growing that. Also have Mac T Garage on Facebook. So join up on Mac T Garage on Facebook so you can get a hold of us and talk about anything. And we do talk about anything as far as garage related stuff fixing and repairing any vehicle, any piece of equipment or anything like that. That is what it's set up for. It is a non-specific make, model, or manufacturer. That's right. If it has an engine, we're going to sit there and talk about how to fix it. So join up on that group. Make sure you take and uh, you know listen to the Band of One here at the end. Might be a few little uh, minutes of uh, additional footage I might toss in here but either way the band of ones playing that great music like and subscribe join all that good stuff and Mercy Grill is going to have a couple one-liners at the end for you and my fee at the floor today and I'm having a great day and I want you to have a great day too thank you for watching Mac T's videos and remember to like and subscribe this is a Mercy Girl production